Welcome to another video on using Nina. In this fourth video, we're going to be looking at simple sequences. But before we do so, I think it's worthwhile taking a look at the website. On the website, you will find a number of useful tabs. There's some news tabs about what's the latest information. There's the download tab that gives you access to the full release and the beta releases. There's a shop that allows you to buy branded goods. And then there's a donate button. I think it's important to support the folks that develop these programs so that they continue their efforts. There's excellent documentation both for the full and the nightly versions, which keeps up to date with all the changes. There's the forum, which uses Discord. And because this is open source, you can get access to the source here. And you can also see there's an issue tracker so that you can find out if an issue has been logged, who's working on it and when it's likely to be fixed. I find that the developers respond very quickly to any reports of issues and they get fixed very quickly. Let's shut this down for a second and let's look at Nina itself. So where we last left off, we had set up our equipment and turned it on as shown by these little power icons next to each of the icons here. And in our framing tab, we had a picture of M31, which was pulled in from a deep sky catalog. And we had a frame drawn over the top of it. Now, sometimes to visualize what the image will look like, it doesn't really help to have the frame rotating around the object. And what you can do is you can flip it. So hit this button up here and the sky background now rotates around a standard frame. And I think this makes it easier to visualize the precise framing. So I'm going to leave it there. And as before, I'm going to do add target to sequence and simple sequencer. And this is where we left off on the last video. And I want to take you through this screen. As I mentioned in previous videos, Nina has a number of different ways of displaying sequence information in increasing sophistication. And this is the simplest. So what's happened is from the framing tab, it's populated the target information into an area that looks very similar to that on the framing tab at the bottom left here, which shows the altitude of the object during the night between twilight and dawn. And it also has some various options. So there's options about what to do at the start and at the end of the sequence in regard to warming and cooling cameras, unparking and parking mounts and meridian flips. There's information about the duration of the sequence and that will get populated by changes to the exposure events down here. And there are a number of other options which are being hidden by these little triangles. So if I expand those out, you can see there's a set of options about the target itself. If the telescope's already pointing at the object and it's exactly where you want it to be, you do not need to slew or center the target. But if it isn't, slew and center is typically what most people use. And so that'll it'll slew the telescope to the target, take a picture, plate solve, and recenter perfectly, and then you're good to go. Equally, if you have a rotator, you can rotate the target so that it matches the framing angle and also start guiding. So I have an auto guider connected. Autofocus is very important during long exposure sequences as the focus can drift and basically autofocus routines are more accurate than our eyes. So typically you would do an autofocus routine at the start and you might do it after a temperature change. I typically do something like at one degree on some of my telescopes. Under here are what they call the exposure events and the default sequence just has one event of one second and it hasn't defined the filter. So we need to add some more detail to this. So for instance, this is the total number of exposures you want. So I'm gonna put in 20 and I'm gonna choose a filter, red, binning one by one. I'm going to dither between exposures and I'm gonna dither, dither every two images. And if I want to, I can change the gain and offset. Now here, the gain and offset is in brackets, which means it's using the default of the camera. And that's set in the Equipment tab on the Camera submenu. 
If you look down here, this is the default gain and offset. So for instance, I can alter that, say, and if I went back to the sequencer tab, it now shows the new defaults. Once I've got one event set down, I can quickly duplicate it with this plus button and just simply change the filter. And if I wish to reorder the events, I can use these arrows. So I can move up or down. I can also disable that event if I don't want it that night and so forth. And I can also save the event. So I can save the entire sequence, I should say not event, and go into sequences and overwrite it. When you populate all this information about your sequences, the duration pops up here. And sometimes a, an imaging sequence may take more than one night. A couple of things to note is that you can alter the way it takes the pictures. At present, it's the sequence mode is one after another, which means all the reds followed by all the greens followed by all the blues, and it's doing 20 of each. If I choose loop, it will go round red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, a number of 20 times up here. And as they run through the sequence, the progression will increase. And if I save the sequence, it'll store the progression. This is only doing one target. And with the simple sequencer, you can still do multiple targets. So if I went back to my framing wizard and selected another popular target, the Pleiades, if I load the image and then do add to sequence, you'll see that there's another target. There's the original one, M31, and then there's M45. And I can change the order in which they do these. So at the moment, it would do M31 and complete it, and then move on to M45. So if I use these arrows here, I can alter the order of the targets. But the new target, like the first target, doesn't have all the information in. And again, I would need to populate this with the different times and the different filters for the whole exposure sequence. And again, put in the options I want for autofocus and so forth. And if I save this, it now saves it as a different sequence called M45. So if I was to clear these out, so I had nothing, I can load these two and it should bring them up as a pair in this case because I selected both. There are a few other selections that need to be changed before I run the sequence. First of all, we're still using the default time of one second. So if I go back into my original target, I forgot to modify the time because it defaults to one second. And so I need to come up with a better value. And 120 seconds is what I typically use at low gain to record star color. I also flipped over one of the autofocus settings. Although I have an autofocus event at the start, I'm not changing the focus position when I change the filter. So there's two ways of doing this. If I click this button, every time the filter changes, it'll redo the autofocus, which is one approach. The other approach is to have filter offsets. And these are set in the options autofocus tab. And if you look down here, there are focus offsets set for my red, green and blue filters. And to make them happen, I need to enable offsets at the top here. So what happens now is when the filter changes, the focuser just simply moves by a simple position change. And if there's backlash re required, that's done either by the module or by the settings up here, as we described in an earlier video. So there's two options, and the main thing to do is make sure you either do one or the other, but not both. Before we leave the simple sequencer, it can also do other things. So for instance, we don't always have to use the framing wizard up here. We can also bring targets in either by simply creating a new blank target, 
and then what we will do is either populate the coordinates if we knew it or we can bring it in from a planetarium so for instance in the sky x i've got ngc 598 is highlighted and i can just bring it in and it populates the altitude profile as before and i can now start creating all the sequence events around that target the other thing you can do is you can create sequences of bias flats and darks so for instance you just bring in a blank target so we do not want to center or target or guide or anything like that we can disable all this um, we don't even need a mount so we can dis disable everything about the mount because all we need is the camera and we change from light to dark and we put in all our dark frames of the right number say 50 dark frames and the same length as our exposures 120 seconds and the same gain settings and so forth we don't need to worry about dithering or guiding and equally we can do things um, flat frames as well obviously with flat frames we need to set a filter value and we can also do bias frames. Now note that if we hit bias and change it to bias it still says 120 seconds so on the safe side changes to zero so there's no chance of it doing something strange. And finally just a couple of little things you can also save a bunch of sequences all in one go by using this button so it saves all the targets as a set so you can pull in a set very easily say for instance if you were taking a bunch of images of different galaxies looking for supernovas and to run the sequence you hit the run button at the bottom here I'm doing this video in daylight so I can't run the sequence but we will look at that in terms of how sequences run and what you can do to interrupt them pause them and so forth in a later video thanks for watching